So have you ever wondered what the differences are between an A36 and an F33? Windy day today, but we're going to take a look at uh, these two airplanes, so stick with us on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Perdue. Today on Flywire, we're going to take a look at the F-33 Bonanza. That's this one, and the A-36 Bonanza. That's that one. You've seen that one before. But we're real lucky to have this one living with us for a little while. Um, it's courtesy of the Eagle Flying Museum. They just acquired the airplane. So we're going to take a look at the real differences between the two airplanes. They share the same heritage, the uh, V-tail Bonanza. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's take a look at it. So let's take a look at a few of the differences, uh, the actual physical differences of the A36 versus the F33. Um, conventional wisdom is that um, they, when Beechcraft made the A36, they put a plug in front of the wing. Basically, it's a 10 inch plug from here to here. So you can see the distance from here to here. We'll look at the F33 in here in a second. But uh, the interesting thing is um, and AOPA has this on their site, you know, when they talk about, hey, this is the A36 and this is all about it. And, and, uh, it's, and, and that's what I thought for years that, about the A36 is they put a plug in front of the wing and this is it right here. And it moves the engine forward and when it does that, uh, it changes the whole CG range of the airplane, uh, which is true. The engine is forward and uh, that does change the CG range of the airplane and that's how you can put so much stuff in the back and have uh, six seats back there. It's uh, really tremendous. Um, so I was really curious about that. So I took out my tape measure and I measured from the nose to the window. And you see the windows uh, are the same. They're exactly the same uh, in both airplanes. And in fact, the distance from the window to the nose is the same. So where do they get the 10 inches? Well, I thought for a while that it was the distance between, they just extended the fuselage. So I looked at the distance between the trailing edge of the wing and the leading edge of the horizontal, and guess what? It's the same. So where did the distance come from? Because, you know, when you look at this thing, the, the, uh, the, the wing is further back from the nose compartment. Okay, so it's, and well, like I said, we'll look at the F-33 here in a sec, but it's further back. So how did that, how did that work? Well, let's go take a look at the F-33 real quick. So here's the F-33, um, up, uh, up close and personal, and you can see here's the uh, engine compartment, and there's the seam, uh, the rivet line that goes from there, and it is about four inches, where it's about 14 on the other one. So. The wing is closer to the engine compartment, and you can see where the leading edge of the wing is compared to the window. Uh, that's the difference right there. The, the wing is basically in line with the corner of the window. So that's why the common, common perception or the, the uh, conventional wisdom is, is that they put a 10 inch plug in front of the wing. And that's how they did it. That ain't how they did it. And like I said, I, I, I measured the uh, trailing edge to the, hor to the hor leading edge of the horizontal to just, to just to confirm that when I started looking at the dimensions and all this, and it didn't make any sense. And uh, I've, had a, I've, I've flown the V-35s, uh, various ones, the, the P, the J, uh, V-35B, and uh, this is the first F-33 that, uh, that I've flown. So uh, it just occurred to me. What, what's the story? What is the real difference between an A36 and a, uh, an F33? Where did that plug come from? I figured that uh, this way to figure it out is, uh, well, the wing is exactly the same between the airplanes. 
the windows are the same, the nose is the same, so where do they put that plug? Where did Beach figure out to put that plug? So I took a look at the trailing edge to the window, to the rear window. This is the and middle seats for the, the uh, A36, but it's the rear seats for uh, the F33 or the V35s and any of the V-tails. So what I did was is measured that distance from the trailing edge to here. And that set the baseline. This was the airplane, basically, the F-33, that, uh, uh, and th this, by the way, evolved from, like, the S. The F-33 evolved from the S-35, uh, V-35, V-35A, and B. And uh, then the uh, A-36, I think, evolved about, actually, a little bit earlier, so, than, uh, than the F-33. I think that was in 70. Anyway, but I mean, Ann's experts might know a little bit more than me. But, um, so I measured this distance from the trailing edge to the uh, window. What did that result in? Let's check it out. So when you measure the distance um, from the trailing edge to the window, as you just saw with the F-33, it was pretty close. Well, this is where the 10 inches is. <laughs> this is, this is uh, they moved, uh, they, they essentially put 10 inches of fuselage right here and uh, then the whole, the wing stayed the same, but the whole fuselage moved forward, uh, if that makes sense to you. And uh, the wing, the relationship to the empennage, the handling qualities, except for this is a bit, a bit of a heavier airplane, all remained the same because that 10 inch plug cost a little bit. So the whole thing moved forward and that changed where the engine was in relation to the, the change of center of gravity, change of center of pressure a little bit. And uh, that's, that's pretty amazing, you think about that. The difference between these airplanes is, uh, this one, the A36, is roughly about 200 pounds heavier than the F33. And that carries through all the way through useful load. The fuel tanks are the same. You can put tip tanks on, this, on the, the F33. This one has tip tanks, so that gives it an extra 30 gallons nominally of fuel. These are the Shannon tips. Um, 74 usable for the mains exactly the same as the F-33. So the 200 pounds uh, carries through uh, though throughout the entire envelope and uh, the, it, as we take a look at the interior, uh, it's a huge difference, huge difference in the airplane. So here's the baggage compartment. This is the, known as the small door and it is indeed a small door. And then that's how you access the baggage compartment back here. Uh, they had a large door, which is almost twice this size, goes out to this frame right about here, and uh, then you can get things in and out pretty easily. Um, seems like most of the Barons, uh, my, the V35B that I owned had a large baggage door, and it was really convenient. It was really nice. Uh, this one doesn't. It's got a small door. And uh, it also has a small baggage area. So comparative, comparatively, it uh, just doesn't have an awful lot of room. And that is a major difference. Uh, you can put 270 pounds back there. But before we look at the interior, let's look at the uh, how you do, uh, what do you do for baggage and people in the A36. And it's this huge door, double door. The 55 Barons basically had the same fuselage and uh, they had the, most of them had the large baggage door. I don't know about small ones, but uh, the interior layout was pretty much the same. And then uh, when they came out with the A36, they did the 58 Baron, which uses the same fuselage and you can get into it and do all the same things. Um, I don't like having the rear seats in this airplane. That makes it a six seat airplane, but uh, I like having uh, the extra space for baggage and stuff like that. This one also has an extended baggage. It goes back this far, and that's where I put all my uh, travel kit and uh, tie-down stuff and everything like that in that airplane. It has a cargo net to hold it all in. But this makes it real easy. I just throw stuff on the floor, and uh, passengers can sit there. The drawback for some passengers is they're sitting backwards uh, while they're flying, and uh, some folks don't like that. But uh, as you've seen in other videos before, this airplane will do about 170 knots, uh, true. And uh, um, with the tip tanks giving me 104 gallons, that really gives me about, uh, for my purposes, uh, 
typically five, five and a half hours of range. I always land with an hour fuel, period. If I'm gonna, I see I'm gonna run down to an hour of fuel, then I'm gonna land. Uh, figure somewhere else to land instead of my destination if I can't make it with that hour as grace. So that's my bottom line. Uh, with the tips, uh, you can actually go quite a bit further. If I pull it back from 170 to about 130, I, I can make over nine hours of range with my, uh, with my buffer. So, uh, of course, that's all independent is how far you get. But the time is what the fuel buys you, and it's pretty cool. Um, I've had this thing packed, and we went to Oshkosh in it, and it had uh, just crap all the way in. Uh, it was basically a two-person airplane. We had so much crap. Uh, same thing when we went to the High Sierra uh, fly-in. It was just uh, piled with camping gear and other crap like that. Um, there is a, you can't really put six people uh, with bags and full fuel in this airplane. And, you know, airplanes, they're all a compromise, and this one is too. It's just super convenient. And because of the way now the relationship of the CG, the loading options are so much greater in this airplane and uh, it's not critical anymore. It's also not quite as subject to the tail wag in turbulence that you see. Sometimes you see that and it's a, it's a reality. But uh, the other thing that I really like about this airplane is that it's a very stable IFR platform. I think pretty much all Bonanzas are, but Typically, they have some lateral instability, some instability in roll. Uh, it's more pronounced in the, uh, in the shorter-bodied airplanes, if you will, than uh, the long-bodied A36. But uh, it's a fun airplane. It's a fun airplane to fly. It's uh, control harmony is really good. And uh, with 300 horsepower, it, it seems like it's a nice, uh, nice performing airplane, too. But as we said, it cruises about 170. What we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, I think you've pretty much taken a look at the interior on this before, uh, so I'm not really going to take a look at that, but uh, in other videos we've seen it, but we're going to take a look at the F-33 and uh, check that out, and then we're going to take it through its paces. This one's got avionics in it to where I can tell what the true airspeed is and all that other kind of stuff, and uh, I, I didn't have to take it to my test track uh, where we did the uh, Skywagon speed tests and stuff like that. So. We're going to take the F-33 today to the test track and see how it performs. Just what kind of speed we get and what kind of approximate fuel flow. It doesn't have a great engine monitor, which is uh, probably on number one on my list uh, of modifications to get a engine, good engine monitor in that thing. So let's go check out the interior. This is the latch on the baggage compartment, and you can see that uh, it's a pretty small area, uh, and the seats sit right there. So, stop rod right there, and uh, it's pretty nice, but it's also something you have to uh, be very careful about in winds and things like that. So, you fold the seat forward and then you get in the back and this is the, the rear seat area back here funny place to put an ELT but uh, there it is so that's it little hat shelf and uh, that's the back seat front seats are there and it doesn't have a good shoulder harness and it's got the standard beach shoulder harness which is okay but I'm trying out these uh, new different kind of shoulder harness from Hooker called the Quickie, and we'll check that out. So that's the uh, difference, and as you can see right down there, that is uh, the spar cover, and in the A36, it's, of course, not, it's further back. It's about under the seats, so it's not, it gives you more uh, room for your feet. But in this case, it gives you a place to put your headset, so. That's the interior of the uh, F-33, and that's pretty much, uh, pretty much the thing. Enough of that talk. Now's the time on sprockets when we dance. Let's go fly this thing, see how it works. So the difference is with the uh, A-36, it's really easy to get in and out of. Uh, it can carry quite a load, quite a few people. Uh, it's a great, uh, comfortable IFR platform. Uh, 
The F-33 is uh, no, you, it's a little bit dirtier than uh, the uh, eighth six. Definitely a bit harder to get in and out of, but it's lighter. It's eight knots uh, less for the uh, liftoff speed than the A-36 is, which means it's going to use less runway, uh, which is good. And it lands just a little bit slower. Uh, glide ratio is basically the same. Uh, so there, there's a lot of similarities and uh, there's a, some, some good differences. We're going to go up right now and we're going to see what uh, what kind of uh, uh, cruise speed we can get out of this thing. It's not quite apples to apples. This has an IO520 in it, uh, whereas uh, Whiskey Bravo has a 550. So, and it's uh, pretty much a brand new engine, so it's a lot stronger than this. This one's got 1,300 hours on it. It feels good. It feels strong. I wish I had an engine monitor. Tell me what's really going on. I'd appreciate that better. But it is what it is. We got to deal with it. So the number of seconds that I count to liftoff speed is going to be less. We'll see. Uh, we'll check out the. Uh, uh, check it out. See how it goes. For some reason, this airplane does seem a little more fun uh, to fly. A little bit sportier. Uh, roll and pitch. And is that because it's shorter and it's a little bit lighter? Um, I don't know. I don't. All right, what I didn't tell you was is that I went and got gas. This thing needed some fuel, so trim's good, flaps good, cow flaps open, mixture. Panel is clear. Portland traffic, white bonanza taking the active 3-5 with a downward departure to the south. All right, from a dead stop, here we go. That's about 10 seconds. How's a break gear up? It just wants to leap off the ground at that point. It's 13 seconds opposed for the A36, so quite a bit faster. Find about a thousand feet per minute. That's pretty nice. Next spin to the whiz wheel, the A6B. Tells us that uh, our true airspeed in this thing is about 172 knots. Not too bad, pretty comparable to the A36. I would expect it to be a little bit quicker, but uh, that's the way it is. So uh, that's pretty interesting. A lot of fun to fly. Um, I don't know about the cost, the differential. It seems to me that the F-33s, nice F-33s are about as expensive as uh, A36s. So it really depends on your mission. As everything in aviation, uh, you know, there's so many compromises, it just depends. But there's one thing about this airplane that the A36 can't do. I don't recommend you try this at home. But in this airplane, man, it does a nice roll. We'll do one the other way. There you have it. This is actually an F-33C, I didn't tell you that. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna have more fun with it uh, as we go forward. So stick with us on Flywire. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I enjoyed making it. Uh, it's a pretty cool comparison between airplanes and compromise. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the uh, subscribe. So I think it's right over there. And hit the bell if you want notifications. And well, we'll see you next time on Flywire.